Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that confirms reality isn't always as it seems. But before we hop into that, I want to thank everybody who supported the first merch drop from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't had the chance yet, after this video, visit shopmytricker.com to check out the store. But with that being said, guys, let's hop straight into the video. There is a new development in the mysterious disappearance of Amelia Earhart the historic aviator who vanished over the Pacific Ocean alongside navigator Fred Noonan during her attempt to become the first female pilot to circle the globe back in 1937, triggering one of the largest and most expensive search and rescue efforts in American history. Researchers from South Carolina believe they finally found her plane after capturing this sonar image of what appears to be a Lockheed 10E Electra aircraft at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. The image was captured about 100 miles from Howland Island, which was where Earhart was supposed to stop and refuel before her disappearance. The discovery could disprove countless theories about what happened, like reports her plane had actually crash-landed on this remote island in the Pacific, and that bones found on that island belonged to Earhart. Researchers hope to return later this year to get close-up images of the wreckage site and prove once and for all what happened in one of the greatest aviation mysteries. I mean, it's great that we could possibly finally have some closure on this age-old mystery, but locating the plane of Amelia Earhart will be a convenient media distraction from other headline news that we should probably be paying attention to. This is breaking news. Elon Musk just announced that the first patient of Neuralink just received their implant and is on their way to recovery. This product is going to enable the user full control over computers, tablets, or phones just by thinking about it. So this product is intended to be used by individuals who have lost control of their limbs. The example that Elon Musk gave is imagine if this was given to Stephen Hawking. Actually, this would help them communicate at a speed faster than a typer or an auctioneer. That's the main goal. I think this is pretty fascinating that this product is coming to light in our lifetime. I'm interested to see where they go next and if this product is truly a success. How many of you are looking to get an implant in your head? I know they're saying that this allows the subject to control computers and devices, but what happens when they turn on AI technology like ChatGPT and now the computers control the subject? I don't know what kind of dark energy is going on during Lana Del Roy's concert, but someone just went to one of her concerts not too long ago and showed us the pictures that he took. Now, before I show you those pictures, Lana actually responded to someone calling her out for putting witchcraft in her concerts, and this is what she said. I know the Bible verse for verse better than you do. P.S. You're giving off super gremlin energy, not in a good way. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, she is openly into witchcraft. In fact, when Trump was running for president, she invited all of her followers on Twitter to hex him. And I don't know what goes down during witchcraft, but she said all of the ingredients can be found online at the stroke of midnight. Now, when this man was at this concert I was talking about, he said that every single picture he tried to take, the faces of all the dancers and Lana Del Roy, Roy was very distorted. Now I take this with a grain of salt because he was probably sitting far and that's just the way cameras work sometimes. But he said overall the vibes were weird. He said there was someone in the crowd screaming at Lana for her tick. I mean, we all remember what happened in Mexico. It looked like a wave of energy just knocked everyone over extremely fast. A lot of people said it was a domino effect, but I mean, I don't know how people just fall that fast all of a sudden. If all of the choreography at your concert is reminiscent of a blood moon sacrifice ritual, then saying that you know the Bible verse for verse isn't really a good argument. <laughs> I'm not really worried about the robot dog barking orders, but once they replace that megaphone with a turd, then we might have some issues. Many people in America are unaware of Nihau, Hawaii's forbidden island, which is privately owned by a single family that prohibits outsiders from entering. Unlike other parts of the United States, Nihau's 70 permanent residents live without paved roads, telephone service, plumbing, or running water. Despite these challenging living conditions, many depend on welfare from the U.S. government. This raises questions about why people choose to live there and why visits are restricted. The exclusion of outsiders traces back to an agreement made when the native population sold the island to the Robinson family in 1864 for what would be equivalent to $325,000 today. The Robinson family, who still owns the island, is committed to preserving traditional Hawaiian culture. This includes mandatory Sunday church attendance, a prohibition on long hair for men, 
and maintaining Hawaiian as the island's official language. Considering these unique aspects, would you consider living in Nihau? It's good that the family is at least trying to preserve some of the traditional Hawaiian practices, but I bet the natives would have never made that deal if they would have known how valuable that land would be to them. We're looking at one of the strangest patents in the entire U.S. patent system. Patent number 2006-001425A1, walking through walls training system. This patent refers to a unique process, a training system that enables a human being to acquire sufficient hyperspace energy in order to pull the body out of a dimension so that it may pass through solid objects. Pretty much anybody can file a patent for anything, so that's not really saying much, but if they were actually able to prove that this works, then I'm pretty sure that there is some government agency that already swooped down on this one. What's the deal with the Freemasons? There's only a few real Freemasons that exist. In other words, when I say a few, I'm talking about maybe a few hundred, maybe at the, you know, at the top level that really, really know the ancient secrets. This goes all the way back to deep, deep antiquity. We're talking about 30,000 plus years ago, there were these brick masons in ancient Kemet called the Shatu. After the Great Flood, Amun-Ra, aka Marduk, he's known as Marduk in the Bible, M-A-R-D-U-K, Kemet, he was known as Amun-Ra, but he had these brick masons helping him rebuild the land of Kem. And these brick masons had the secret knowledge of space flight technologies, how to turn stone structures into advanced computer housing, data storage devices, as well as power generators and many other functions. A lot of the stone structures that were built were actually multifunctional stone computers. If you're going to a place where, where you only have limited resources that you can't take a factory and a whole bunch of workers with you, what do you do? You learn how to work with what's there. And they mastered stone masonry, but they also encoded and embedded a lot of the wisdom and knowledge from the ancient Egyptian mysteries and the Kemetic mysteries into the structures. Now, these Freemasons were called Shatu. As a matter of fact, the Shatu helped Amun-Ra escape. In the last, there was a pyramid war. There were two pyramid wars. The second pyramid war in the tablets talks about the fact that the Shatu helped Amun-Ra escape through a hidden path in one of the pyramids and before he left he decreed he would leave the kingdom to his Ra Kam. Ra Kam, K-A-M, translates now into shield. Kam translates into shield, Ra shield. Over time it became Rothschilds and so this decree came down tens of thousands of years ago. Who's the richest family on the planet worth 700 trillion dollars combined net worth? The Rothschilds. If he knows this much about them then what are the chances that the secret ancient knowledge that they claim to have is actually just misinformation as well because if we're being honest none of them were alive back then to be able to verify I've never encountered a glitch while streaming a TV show or a movie that causes the character's face to shapeshift into a goblin like that, but since we're talking about the royal family, it's somehow an accurate depiction. I am home alone by myself. My Tesla sees a person. Uh-uh, I'm locking the door. That's creepy. That is creepy. Hold on. That has me freaked out. Is there someone there? Y'all see anything like for real? I'm being so serious right now. I just feel really weird right now. Like I Like, it just feels really weird right now. Like, I don't, like, I really think I should just leave. Like, shut the garage and just leave and come back later. It's either somebody hiding in the bushes waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike or he got a poltergeist. Either way, I'm pulling off. The, over the city, looking down on Washington, D.C., you'll see there are two main boulevards uh, culminating in a pyramid. And just at the very top of the pyramid is a street cutting it off. And then within the, the triangle at the top, where the eye on the dollar bill is, is the Capitol. And the Capitol building sits there. It's a pyramid. Then it has the, uh, uh, the Cleopatra's Needle, which is a Washington monument. And the, and the river, the long riverway, uh, the long waterway is called the River Styx, which is where Pharaoh went into heaven on the River Styx. It is all laid out in Masonic symbolism. And the, and the five-pointed star, which is a pentagram, has always been used. Satan worship, Satanic worship, the five-pointed pentagram. And if you take the arms off of a pentagram, you have a pentagon. 
and the United States Pentagon is sitting exactly due north, aiming due north at the North Star Thuban, which is drawing power, according to the ancient Egyptians, for, for the god of war. Just take a, a, a road map of Washington, D.C. Just take a look at it from the air, and you'll see what appears to be the goat of Mendez. And the goat of Mendez... Which is a symbol in Freemasonry. Right. It's a symbol, it's a, it's a demonic symbol within the Freemasonry. You see the goat and the, the horns and the whole thing. The, the whole city is laid out like that. It's all over. So what we're basically saying here is that there is nothing happening by chance. I don't exactly know what the intentions were behind designing an entire city like this, let alone a nation's capital, but let's just say that a pentagram doesn't make the most efficient traffic layout, so it's definitely intentional. Why? Because in order to open an account, you need to have an ID. Right. And um, I have to say that when, we, when I started this job, there were actually very little countries in Africa or Latin America that had one ubiquitous type of ID, and certainly that it was digital, and certainly that it was biometric. And uh, we've really worked with all our partners to actually help that being, uh, um, I mean, to grow this. And the interesting part of it is that, you know, yes, it is very necessary for financial services, but not only. So you know, it's also good for school enrollment. It's also good for health. Who actually got a vaccination or not? Uh, it's it's very good to actually to get your subsidies, you know, from the government. So this has not only effect to the financial services. It's a very important issue. But never once did she mention what type of advantage or benefit that a digital ID would have for the people. I'm fine with my plastic ID. Stanley is responding to concerns that their popular Stanley cups contain lead. The viral stainless steel bottles have taken over social media and beyond, so much so that recently, a woman was even arrested and charged with stealing $2,500 worth of Stanley products. But now concerns are being raised online that the products contain lead, prompting the company to address the situation. In a statement to The Independent, a Stanley spokesperson said that lead is used in the manufacturing process, but that the product itself would have to be damaged in order for people to be exposed to it. They reveal. Our manufacturing process currently employs the use of an industry standard pellet to seal the vacuum insulation at the base of our products. The sealing material includes some lead. Once sealed, this area is covered with a durable stainless steel layer, making it inaccessible to consumers. Do you own a Stanley Cup? This company response didn't provide any peace of mind for anybody who owns that cup, especially the person that's sitting in jail who stole $2,500 worth. Now they got two things to worry about. He brought up MK Ultra. Yes. MK Ultra was a government program run by the Central Intelligence Agency. Originally started as something called Bluebird in 1948-49, morphed into Artichoke, and then in 1952 became MK Ultra. It was a mind control program, a brainwashing program. The CIA was trying to learn how to control people's behavior without their knowledge. Now, their main objective was to create what they called hypnoprogram assassins, people who would on command and have no memory of their programming and be amnesia even of the act after the fact often that was just one of, that was their main goal but they were also trying to create couriers you know military people that they could implant messages send them you know across dangerous areas where they were you know, at that time it was the vietnam war and deliver messages and then have them wiped from their memory in case they were captured if the goal of this program was to control people's behaviors without their knowledge then social media and these are like the modern day mk ultra houston we have a problem I've always wanted to say that, and now I can. This giant leap will also start right here in Houston, orbiting aboard the International Space Station. Right here in Houston. This Houston? Yeah, that's right. Johnson Space Center. Go down to Building 9, go to Street View, and go inside, and you'll see a mock-up of the International Space Station, but it's perfectly accurate down to every wire and we're going to explore these rooms together and i was walking through these rooms and i started to notice that uh hey i've seen this before on the live feeds and i noticed something out of my peripherals and i said wait a minute wait what i've seen that before ah there it is. i knew i had seen that before and whoa a lot of magical things happen right here in Houston. oh and look at that that looks familiar as well. Seen a lot of shots filmed with those little flags. Popular area. Right here in Houston. I gotta check this one out for myself real quick. My biggest concern, investments on AI to make machines 
smarter. There is no limit to the amount of money that's been pumped into it. The investment in HI to make humans smarter, human intelligence, <clears throat> that's just sad. It's sad that we're going to live in a world right around the corner where machines will be more articulate, analytical, critical thinking, banter ability, um, contextual, deep understanding, while we have resorted to short tweets, emojis, memes, and stickers to communicate. He makes a great point. If we took the money that's being spent on AI research and reallocated that back to teachers and to the schools, then we would probably be much better off than we are now and not at threat of being replaced by AI. If you ever hike alone, just be careful, especially if you're doing it in LA at Griffith Park. Many say a lot of rituals and sacrifices are taking place here and because of the history, this place is very haunted. Now, someone was on a hike during the day and listened to what she caught on camera. <laughs> This is what it's like in Los Angeles just taking a stroll through the park, which is supposed to be your most peaceful place, and I definitely don't want to see what the rest of the city looks like. If you thought your shopping bags were feeling a little lighter, it could be because more and more products are getting smaller. Mouthwash, tea bags, and sausages are among the supermarket staples that have been downsized thanks to so called shrinkflation as the manufacturers look to cut costs. That's according to the consumer watchdog, which they found. Listerine's fresh burst mouthwash shrank by 100 milliliters, despite its price on Tesco shelves going up by 52%. And that means shoppers pay 21% more for 17% less. Some varieties of PG tips also used to contain 180 tea bags. Now, at many supermarkets, you will just get 140. This is disturbing, especially if we think about items like potato chips, where the bags were already pretty light before shrinkflation. Now they might as well just be selling air. This was a bold move. Kim Kardashian announces she's going to be the face and global ambassador for Balenciaga. We all know what happened in November 2022. Basically told the public she was reevaluating her relationship with the Balenciaga. This is what she wrote in her announcement today. She started wearing them again April 2023, not even six months after, then continuing to wear them to events all of 2023. There's two sides to this debate. People are either angry at her for accepting this new role and there's a side where kim maybe really did talk to them and balenciaga is still a brand at the end of the day honestly with the amount of drama and controversy that balenciaga has been involved with over the past couple years kim kardashian is the ideal spokesperson it's her specialty very few people are aware of the fact that stonehenge was actually reconstructed in 1954. i personally believe it was a malicious attempt to make stonehenge appear a lot more recent than it really is but by simply looking at the stones the giant megaliths that stand there and the erosion on these stones, it clearly tells us that these are very ancient stones, an ancient site. The erosion is very, very old. You cannot have sarsen stone erode to such an extent in a few thousand years. And the example is the, the one tall stone in the middle of Stonehenge that fell over at some stage and broke. The erosion on that break is about two feet or 50 centimeters of erosion on a clean break of sarsen stone. It's impossible for sarsen stone to erode 50 centimeters or two feet in a few thousand years. So what I'm telling you is that Stonehenge is most likely more than a million years old. And that the reconstruction of Stonehenge in 1954 was a malicious attempt to confuse us and to make us believe that human history is a lot younger than most of us can realize. I feel like when it comes to ancient sites like Stonehenge, the pyramids at Giza or Gobekli Tepe, there's really no accurate way to date them without organic materials. So that also means that the mainstream timeline is most likely incorrect as well. Apparently, 
these ice cream sandwiches doesn't melt. According to a few articles online, it's because of the mono and diglycerides, which are stated twice in here, and a few of the gums that prevent it from melting. I put it to the test. I put it on my kitchen counter at room temperature overnight to see how long it would take to melt. Unfortunately, it didn't melt. After sitting on the kitchen counter for over 13 hours, not a single drop, not a single leak. What kind of ice cream is this? I remember as a kid, these things would instantly melt in my hands. How long until it melts? Should I let it sit out for another 12 hours to make 24 hours and see if it actually does melt? You can probably run this through a pizza oven and it still wouldn't melt with this long list of questionable ingredients. Roseanne Barr has been joking about how she sold her soul to the devil and I'm going to prove to you that she's not joking. Oh, I like summon Satan and I, I write about how I made it. Where I do you summon no. Satan? In the moon. Eat, pray, love, conjure Satan. <laughs> and when I was 12 years old, I signed a, a deal with Satan in my room, and I, I was to... CBS doesn't condone no. this in any way. In her 2011 book, Roseanne Arkey, she flat out tells us that she sold her soul to the devil at the age of 12 for fame and fortune. Quote, when I was 12, I summoned Satan and signed my name in blood. I had learned how to do this from the Mormon contingent in my hometown. These people keep records on everything, and the satanic worship sections of their libraries are some of the best. He presented me with the agreement I signed in my own hand, in my own blood. This book is rather revealing. She tells us about her consultation with a Kabbalistic rabbi. She summons Lucifer to try to get out of the contract. And she talks about how we're run by a satanic new world government. It's quite the revelation. It should also be noted that she's been on Tucker Carlson talking about the existence of the Nephilim fallen angels. They think they're like royals in, in a rarefied sphere of DNA or something above us. Like, did they come from another planet? I don't know if this is the Nephilim, right? <laughs> Here we go. That's what I said. No, no, I'm, what I, no let me just say. Heard. I said, it's I don't know right. anything about that stuff. Summoning the devil at 12 years old is a bit extreme. I was still playing Game Boy Color at that age. Look how close this was to being really bad. And I mean really bad. About five more inches, he would have been the star of the next Final Destination movie. Why do you think our military flew over this city like this for three and a half hours today and two hours the day before? How much is that for fuel? Maybe they never got a spirograph to play with as a kid. What do you think they're doing? I don't know if they were just spraying chemtrails over that one area, but it kind of looks like a cymatic pattern, man. Let me know what you guys think about this one. This is no ordinary clock. It doesn't tell time. Instead, it counts down to the apocalypse. This is the doomsday clock. And if we're to ever strike midnight, well, let's just say we probably won't be here to see. On January 23rd, experts updated just how close they think we are to catastrophe. The Doomsday Clock was conceived by a group of scientists who worked on the atom bomb, known as the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. In 1947, the symbolic clock was first set at seven minutes to midnight by designer Martel Langsdorff, representing their fears of atomic annihilation. The seeds of man's oblivion. Fears eased by 1963 with the signing of the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, and the Bulletin reset the clock to 12 minutes to midnight. Since then, the clock has been set further and closer to midnight, according to the severity of an increasingly diverse range of existential threats, determined by scientists and Nobel laureates, reaching its furthest in 1991 at a comforting 17 minutes from disaster. In 2022, the clock was kept to just 100 seconds to midnight due to issues like nuclear armament, climate change, and threats to democracy. In 2023, Scientists say that we were closer than ever to global catastrophe at just 90 seconds to midnight. And now in 2024, experts say we are still at an alarming 90 seconds to midnight, due in part to conflicts around the globe, AI advancement, and slow movement on climate change. The doomsday clock is a symbol, an indicator of the perils humans create, and a plea to find solutions for a better future. I mean, I can live with 90 seconds to midnight, but once it starts approaching 30 seconds, then I'm volunteering for that Mars mission. This is a real sign in a city called Davo in the Philippines. 
and there's a lot of history behind it. Now, as you can see in the sign, it says, Waving children, please wave back with a pair of children with their arms up. This sign serves as a warning to everyone passing by that there are ghosts of children in the area. It's believed there's a ton of supernatural activity all around the area, and if you don't wave back, these children will come and haunt you. Upon researching this story, I haven't found anyone reporting that they haven't waved back to any of the children. I've only heard accounts of people waving back and then being okay afterwards. So with that information in my head, I can only assume the worst happens if you don't wave back. So obviously, if you're traveling in the Philippines and you see a child wave to you, wave back for your own safety. The last thing you want is a ghost child following you and haunting you for the rest of your life. If I'm ever in the Philippines and I'm riding down this road, I'm waving with both hands just to be certain. I'm, I'm, I'm literally over here. Like, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm tipsy. I just came back from the hotel bar. This is scary. The fuck out of me. And I was reading a scary book. Like, no joke. I was just reading a horror novel. Hey, Dre, Dre, and I came back, and my name is saying, six, 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 and I'm terrified. They're coming to take it out of my room, but I'm haunted. There is a ghost. Ah, it's haunting me. It's haunting me. Now, but for real, ghosty, I want to be friends. I want to be friends. I'm terrified, but I want to be friends with the ghost, but I'm terrified. This is how we live. Hi, right, front desk. Yeah, I believe that there's a demon in my closet. Do you guys mind sending up some holy water when you get a chance? Okay. Okay. Great. Great. I'll be right here. Surprisingly, they share similar facial features, but don't we think that this is a wee bit of a stretch? I doubt that the devil wears Prada and makes fire mixtapes. But with that being said, guys, that was the video. Thank you for coming to kick it with me. Let me know what you guys thought about these creepy TikToks in the comments below. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself.